The PC Engine CD-ROM add-on released in 1988 in Japan allowed the PC Engine to play CD-ROM games that were larger in size and with full Redbook CD audio. However, now, 30 years later, these units are failing due to bad lasers, broken gears, or just flat worn out from age. So along comes the Super SD System 3 by Terra Onion. This is the final solution for PC Engine fans as it completely emulates the CD mechanism along with Hue card games and even the arcade card. What is happening guys, Todd here. I would like to start this review by saying this device was provided by Terra Onion and I did not pay for it. However, all opinions expressed in this video are my own. I was not paid to create this video and no one reviewed this video prior to me publishing it. The Super SD System 3 is a plug-in module that attaches to the back of the PC Engine, Core Graphics, or Super Graphics, and allows you to play both Hue Card and CD-ROM based games from a micro SD card. It supports CD-ROM, Super CD-ROM, and Arcade Card CD-ROM game images with 100% compatibility. It can emulate all the different system cards, including 2.0, 3.0, and RK card. So you don't even need an original system card to play any of the CD-based games. And it also has a built-in amplified RGB video and stereo audio output. We will talk more about those later. The Super SD System 3 is currently priced at 240 euros, which is about 300 US dollars as of the filming of this video. And considering all the features it has, I think this is a reasonable price. When you buy the Super SD System 3, it comes in this fantastic cardboard box. Full color illustrations give you details about the system. I especially love the great 80s style artwork on it. They even include a full color manual with it as well. This is a nice touch and makes the whole package that much more appealing. Make sure to check out the manual as it gives you lots of information on using the unit and details on the supported formats which we'll talk about later. The unit itself is housed in this beautiful transparent smoked plastic case. The quality of the molding is outstanding with both the Super SD System 3 and Terra Onion logos on it. The front of the unit houses a 69 pin connector which attaches to the rear of the PC engine. Since the unit pulls the power from the console, there's no need for a second power supply. On the right hand side is the micro SD card slot which supports up to 256 gigabyte cards. They can be formatted in either FAT32 or EXFAT. Just to the left of the micro SD slot is a green LED behind the transparent shield that blinks during SD card access. On the rear is a 9 pin mini DIMM port for RGB video and stereo audio. This is the same socket that is used on the Genesis 2 or Mega Drive 2 console, so you can use either a regular composite video cable or RGB SCART cable. If you decide to go with an RGB Euro SCART cable, it must be designed for the Genesis 2 and Mega Drive 2 video standard. This means it needs to have a 75 ohm resistor and 220 microfarad capacitor on each of the RGB lines in the SCART hood, otherwise the video will be too bright and washed down on your display. The Super SD System 3 also supports composite sync for those of you with picky RGB displays that require clean sync. If you need that, make sure that your cable is built with that in mind with the correct components in the SCART hood. Okay, since everyone likes to look at the stuff on the inside, let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Flip the Super SD System 3 over and remove the four Phillips head screws from the bottom. At this point, you can pull apart the top and bottom shells. I'm amazed at just how small the PC actually is for all the functionality that it contains. The magic happens by using the FPGA to emulate the CD-ROM drive, the controller, system cards, and Hue cards. The RGB video is amplified by using a Texas Instruments 7374 video amplifier. And you can tell this is a revision to PCB as it has Terra Onion's web URL written on the board. Before we get any further into this review, I should probably talk about the revision 1 and revision 2 PCBs. When Terra Onion first started shipping out the Super SD System 3, they started getting feedback from the first folks who received their units. Composite sync wasn't working for the majority of people that needed it and the RGB output had video noise. At this point, Terra Onion halted sales and shipping of any more units. They spent a few days diagnosing the issue, they reached out to some folks who were very well versed in working with PC Engine video output, and they redesigned the PCB in the Super SD System 3. As of the filming of this video, they are waiting on newly produced boards to be assembled, and they are replacing anyone's board who is affected and all newly shipped orders will have these revised boards in them. The unit I'm showing off in this video is the new revised board with a fixed RGB video and composite sync. To get started using your Super SD System 3, plug the unit into the back of your PC Engine. It works with the original white PC Engine, both core graphics models, and even the Super Graphics. Even though their packaging and documentation doesn't specifically mention, it does indeed work with the TurboGrafx-16. Here is some footage of it in use with the TurboGrafx-16 from my buddy GadgetUK164. Check out the description of this video for a link to his channel. Now that we have the Super SD System 3 attached to your NEC console, just plug in your video cable to the 9-pin mini DIN. 
Next, you'll need to copy some game ROM and CD images to your micro SD card. Here, I have a 64 gigabyte micro SD card formatted to EXFAT. The Super SD System 3 supports both FAT32 and EXFAT, but both work equally well as I've tested both of them. Let's create a folder on the SD card called BIOS. Copy your CD or Super CD-ROM BIOS files here. Usually the 3.0 Super CD-ROM BIOS will play the majority of the games. However, you can have up to 10 different BIOS files present for maximum compatibility. And you can acquire the BIOS files with a quick trip to Google. Next, I'm creating a folder called HueCard, and I'll copy my HueCard or TurboChip games into that folder. You can leave the HueCard games in the root of the SD card. However, it is nice to organize them, especially if you have a complete HueCard set with both Japanese and US games. Now I'm copying the CD games to the micro SD card. Each CD game should be in its own folder that contains the Q file and either ISO or bin file. You can copy these CD games folders into additional folders as well to help with organization. The Super SD System 3 supports Hue card and Turbo Chip Game ROM images ending in PCE and CD images with a Q file and ISO, bin, and or WAV audio formats. However, compressed audio formats like MP3 or FLAC are not supported and CD image formats like Clone CD are also not supported. Once you're finished copying games to the micro SD card, go ahead and plug it into the side of your Super SD System 3 and you're ready to get your game on. The Super SD System 3 splash screen briefly shows up a power on and then you're brought into the interface. Pressing the select button on the controller changes the navigation tabs at the top of the screen between Hue cards and CD-ROMs. Down below these tabs is the current working folder displaying any files and folders supported under the tab. If you're in the Hue card tab, CD-ROM games will not show up and vice versa for the CD-ROM tab. Since we're in the Hue card tabs currently, none of the CD game images will show up. Under the game list, you'll notice a genre and year listing, and to the right hand side is an empty box. In the future, Terra Onion will have a tool available that you can run in Windows against your SD card, and it will fill in all this information and display a small picture of the game on the right hand side when navigating your ROM list. Pressing button 2 on the gamepad brings us into the options screen. First option is boot the last game. If this is checkmarked every time the system is powered on, it will automatically skip the menu system and launch the last game played. Unless you need an automated Kyo style mode, I would skip enabling this. However, if you do enable this, you can bypass this option once enabled by holding down the run button on your controller when powering on the system, and then go into the options and uncheckmark this option. Next option down is enable in-game trigger. This option allows you to exit the game and go back to the Super SD System 3 game menu. If you enable it for the first time, you'll receive this message indicating that it's basically experimental and may cause issues. I've seen some games lock up or behave oddly when it's enabled. Personally, I wouldn't enable it. However, if you do, the in-game trigger can be issued by holding down select and run on the gamepad for several seconds. Terra Onion has mentioned that this feature will be improved on in future firmware updates. For now, simply power your system off and back on to go back into the game menu. Next option is skip CD-ROM, press run. On a normal PC Engine CD or DO system, when you put in a CD and power it on, you are presented with a screen that tells you to press run to start the game. However, with this option enabled, it quickly bypasses that screen and starts the game up. You can disable this option to be able to access the CD-ROM save management screen by pressing the select button instead of run. Per game backup RAM is the fourth option on the menu. Enabling this allows each game to save its backup RAM to the SD card in its own individual file, avoiding the backup RAM limitation of the original PC Engine CD-ROM systems. These files will be created in a folder called BUP in the root of the micro SD card. If you disable this option, all CD-ROM backup RAM saves will be created in a single file called backup.bup, much like on original hardware. Next up is enable arcade card. This option allows arcade card games to work as the Super SD System 3 has a complete arcade card emulation feature built in. No need for costly arcade system cards to play these games. If you run into any compatibility issues with any CD or Super CD games, you can disable this feature. Click on Select CD-ROM System Card. This takes you into a submenu that allows you to select from the CD or Super CD BIOS files. You can have up to 10 BIOS files present, but only one can be selected at a time. Go down to the BIOS file you want to use and press button 1 on your gamepad. This will select that BIOS file and then exit you back out to the main interface. You can verify the BIOS file selected by going back into the Options menu and looking for it to have a check mark beside it. For the majority of CD and Super CD based games, the Super CD 3.0 BIOS will be all you need, but you might want to keep a 2.0 BIOS file around as well. The final option in the options menu is the version information. This tells you the serial number of the Super SD System 3 PCB, firmware version, and FPGA code information. If your game images are in folders, press the run button to enter the folder and then press run again on the gamepad to launch it.
turn the system off and back on, we're back at the main menu and we have a new option at the top of the screen. Load last game now appears above any game images. If you select this, it will load the last game that was played on the system. Personally, I wish it said what the last game played was and maybe in a different color to stand out. Pressing select on the controller, we can now see our CD game images available to play. Press run to start a game. You can see just how quickly it bypasses the press run screen and loads the game. As a matter of fact, load times are reduced to just mere moments. It's a lot like playing games from an emulator or even playing them from a hue card. But besides just quick load times, another benefit is that the system doesn't briefly pause when changing music tracks on CD-based games. Here's an example of Super Raiden played on an actual CD system. When it gets to the first level boss, the game changes to a different audio track. However, the game briefly pauses while it switches tracks. This can be annoying and on some games it's a frequent occurrence. Let's try that same thing on the Super SD System 3. The game plays on smoothly while the game audio track changes almost instantly allowing for no interruptions in gameplay. If we eject our SD card out and put it back in our PC, we now have a file on the root of the SD card called lastpce.cfg. This file tells the Super SD System 3 what the last game was played, and also if it should be auto-booted at power on depending on if the boot to last game option was enabled in the options menu. And we have a new folder called BUP. This contains those backup RAM saves for games that support it. So you can get an idea of audio and video quality, let's get this party started with some cue card games. Since CD-ROM and Super CD-ROM games will be the primary draw for most people, let's look at a few of those too. And of course, arcade card games are fully supported by the built-in arcade card emulation. Finally, even homebrew stuff plays great.
Instead of buying a PC Engine or Turbo Duo, recapping the system, RGB modding it, and buying a Turbo EverDrive for cue card games and a stack of CDRs for copied CD games, you can now buy a cheap PC Engine or Core Graphics or Turbo Graphics even, and then this add-on and be in PC Engine heaven. And if you have a little more money to spend, team up the Super SD System 3 with a Super Graphics and play everything, including Super Graphics games. As awesome as the system is, I do have a couple criticisms and they can be addressed via firmware updates. First off, that last game played menu item should really indicate what the last game played was. I have selected the option many times thinking I last played one game only to have a different game start. Also, I'm not particularly fond of the game menu font. Sometimes it can be hard to read, so perhaps a different font would work better. And the hue card and CD-ROM tab navigation system at the top of the screen seems kind of redundant if you have all your games organized into folders. And if we get rid of the navigation tab, I would recommend moving the options button over to the select button as having it on button two doesn't really make any sense and it's easy to accidentally trigger. And finally, I would really like to see the in-game trigger be completely fixed as having to power the system off and back on to switch games is inconvenient. It goes without saying, if you're a PC Engine or TurboGrafx fan, you should really consider purchasing one of these. There is nothing else in the market that delivers the features or the game compatibility that the Super SD System 3 provides. And while the price at first glance seems high compared to picking up a Duo and decking it out with RGB, a new laser, and possibly new caps, you still wouldn't have the full optical drive emulation that the Super SD System 3 provides. Well guys, that's it for this review. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. And down in the comments, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the Super SD System 3. Is this something you're interested in or would you rather just collect the original games? And before I go, huge thanks to the Terra Onion team for providing me with this review unit. Without their generosity, this video might not have been possible. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.